Hello everyone. Well, my name is Meng. I'm from our analysis team. So uh, I'm here with uh, Miguel, who is the uh, product manager from Nexus, and I also have here. Okay. Yep, and I'm here with uh, Gotham, uh, account manager from DC Cap. All right. So the floor is your guys. Thank you very much, man. Thank you everybody for being here today. I I really wanted to be at this event. I have never been to Singapore and I'm extremely happy to be a part of this event. So thank you very much for the invitation. My name is Miguel Valparda. I'm the product manager for the Nexus product, for the for the Magento product at Nexus. I am also a four times Magento master. I'm, I'm also one of the guys maintaining Magento tool on GitHub. Hey everyone, good morning. Uh, this is Gautam from DC Cap. Uh, I'm an account manager and uh, I've been in charge of the delivery and uh, process with DC Cap and uh, have overall uh, e-commerce experience around five years and really excited to be part of this uh, event today. Yep, so during this session, we will explain how to increase your Magento to performance for the holiday season to finish your year strong. We will include Magento specific tweaks and general e-commerce recommendations. Whether your client is small or large, technical or non-technical, budget conscious or rolling in cash, setting them up for success is your number one goal. If you're not sure where to start, we are here to help you. Now, we're going to start by talking about measuring your current performance. What are some of the things you should know before you start improving your stuff? Now, if you ask me, I'm going to start by saying having a complete assessment of your site before you start working on history performance is a crucial step. You can't improve something you can't measure. And that means selling unrealistic goals like a sub one second category page load when your current category page is taking six seconds to load would only lead to frustration and missed opportunities. Now, I always tell people they should be starting with low hanging fruit and go all the way up. And this includes trying to improve the simplest things first and trying to go all the way up to the most challenging technical issues you might have. There's no need to start with the hardest part. There's no need to start with the hardest task. If you start by improving, for example, the size of your images, or the size of your JavaScript or CSS bundles, this will greatly help improve the performance of your site. Goram, what, is, what are some of the sites people should know before they start improving their store? What are some of the things you usually see? Uh, sure, Michael. So uh, I think first you got to understand, you know, how critical a website performance is. So they they say, you know, a delay in a website load time by one second uh, reduces the conversion rate by seven percentage and the customer satisfaction by you know sixteen percentage and. Uh, the so page views go down by 11%. So, you know, hence a quickly loading site does not just get a good Google ranking, but also keeps your profits and sales better. So you've got to understand that first. And before you jump onto any performance improvement, you know, first you've got to collect data such as the load time, the number of requests per pages for all the pages, the critical pages, and what's the bounce rate and all of that. You could use tools like, you know, GT metrics, Lighthouse, and, you know, whichever your team is comfortable with. And, you know, you've got first record the grades, uh, what's the load time. And based on that, you know, you could have a plan scheduled on what you're going to do next. And again, one more major thing that I would suggest is, you know, you could you have to first determine your traffic and also, you know, uh, what are your sales rates? So based on that, you could, you know, allocate maybe if a budget is needed, so you can just allocate that and, you know, you can start working on it proportionally. It doesn't make sense, you know, investing almost $10,000 when your sales is just $1,000. So it makes sense. So that's another thing you'll have to consider. And also, you know, like basic practices, like, you know, uh, making sure the catch and production mode is on and after the cron jobs are scheduled as necessary and not on short durations, clearing up the logs, everything should be done to just see, you know, even if uh, the, the performance is improved and then get on to, you know, working on the GT metrics items. And, you know, uh, plan for code audit and also maybe if needed do the stress testing and load testing and see how much, uh, you know, incoming traffic your uh, website is able to handle. And also you can plan based on that. Absolutely, I completely agree with everything, everything you just said. So to make this clear, you need to have the information before you start. And then when you have that information, you need to set goals. It's not like you can go and blanketly say, I want my front page to load in under one second. That's great, that's a great goal. But if it's an unrealistic goal that's not baked with information, it's only gonna cause you problems. And then one thing I wanted to add here is that there are different types of load testings. When you're trying your site with, I don't know, GT metrics or page speed from Google Lighthouse, that's great. But that's gonna give you just the performance for a single visitor visiting your site. And when it comes to Black Friday or Summer Monday, that kind of traffic is not real. You need to test your site. You need to load test your site 
with a real traffic or a traffic as similar as you can as the one you are going to be receiving. Meaning GT metric is great, but it's going to only show you a single person visiting your site. And that's not how your users are going to be behaving. That means you might, might, you might want to test your site with 10, 100 or 1000 concurrent users at the same time, because that would be a more realistic traffic pattern to the one you are going to be seeing with, for example, in Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or the week before Christmas. Oh, definitely, Michael. I think yeah, those are really valid points to know to add on to that. Yep. So how about, what do you think about this, Goram? I keep seeing people that don't understand the limitation and they're trying to, they're trying to improve something. They don't even know how it works. Like, for example, if you can't process 10 orders a day because a systemic issue, trying to process 100 or 1,000, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make things worse. It's not going to magically work, and you'll be able to process 100 or 1,000 orders during Black Friday or Cyber Monday when you can't process 10 orders a day. Understanding where your bottleneck is can greatly impact your decisions instead of making uninformed choices. This means, again, you need to be able to measure the performance or the processes you have, and then you can start improving those. It's not like you can say, I want to process 1,000 orders during Black Friday. That's not going to happen if you can't process 10. So again, you need to be aware of your limitations. Goran, what are some of the limitations you see at DC Cup? What are some of the things that people do and should be doing to optimize your site? Oh, sure, Michael. So basically, you know, you should analyze uh, when you're starting to work on performance, you know, you've got to analyze where the real issue is, is at the code level or the infrastructure level. So if you have an issue at the code level, but, you know, start increasing the servers, it's not going to make much difference, no matter how much uh, power you add to that, it's not going to make a difference. And the same way, you have a problem with the infrastructure, no matter how much you, you know, optimize the code, it's not going to do any, anything good over there. So that's the first thing you've got to decide. And then again, uh, when it comes to optimization, the main reason, you know, there's, there's a dip in the performance or the grading of your website is due to many third-party applications that you use. It's not much you can do about this. Uh, certain things like, you know, leveraging browser catch is one thing you can do for these third-party applications. So you can reach out to these uh, third-party applications individually and ask them, you know, if they could uh, leverage browsing catch. And, uh, and you can just try that as the first step or uh, not putting much on your shoulder. And in case if that doesn't work, maybe you can, you know, host these third-party JS files locally uh, and make these, you know, update these uh, on a regular basis on a cron. So these are things, you know, that might help you. And also like, you know, uh, using lading, lazy loading of images, uh, that could be a major uh, help for you because, you know, images are, you know, the major raw weightage of the website. So that could be one thing. And again, you know, how good you make use of the radish and varnish catchers and of course the CDNs, they're also going to be a major player. And uh, again, you know, uh, in terms of booze, you'll have to, you know, do a good code audit, make sure you follow those recommendations. And one critical thing over here, you know, you've got to, working website, you're just trying to optimize the performance and when you're trying to order the code and, you know, try to fix it, you have to make sure the functionality works fine. So, you know, you have to test and test it again, make sure the functionality is there, uh, don't break it and just try improving on top of that. And again, you know, what you've got to test uh, all the performance optimizations, you have to do it in a server that's almost equivalent to the production server. Doesn't make sense to work on a dev server that's got low uh, power, you know, a low configuration, because whatever you do is not going to make a difference and you'll have to wait until it goes to the production server to see its impact. But if you have something that's equivalent to the production server, any changes you could, you know, do a trial and error method and see if it works or not, doesn't work, and then take a decision on moving it. I completely agree with everything you just said. And the last part, the last point you said, testing your stuff in a server as similar as the one you're using in production is extremely important. People come to me and tell me, hey, it works in my machine, it works in my local environment. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But that's not the environment people use they, when they visit your site. Meaning you really need to test your stuff in a dev server or in a QA server or in a UAT server that is really similar to the one you're using in production. And that includes the MySQL version, that includes the PHP version, that includes the Apache or Nginx version. The closer your test environment is, to your live server, the better it's going to be and the faster you're going to be seeing incompatibilities or issues caused by the, by the software you use. And then, Gordon, you also mentioned third-party extensions. This is really important because you can have a great site. You can have, like, the best coded site. But when you have a blog in JavaScript coming from, I don't know, Google Analytics or Jodpo or Shippers IQ or any other company, that's going to be problematic. So there are some times where you can put your JavaScript code and put that in the footer or try to move that above the fold. And that will greatly improve your site performance. 
And again, it's not it's not your fault those scripts are taking too long to load because it's a third party set, you don't control that server. But again, it affects the general experience in your site and you should be trying to minimize the impact those third party scripts have, you know? Oh, definitely, Michael, uh, definitely makes sense what you say. And uh, maybe uh, this could be a better question to you on uh, determining, you know, uh, the server sizes. So since you're from Nexus, I think you're the right person to answer this, you know, how much computing power is really needed? You know, there's a big question that most of our clients come and ask us also. They ask, you know, uh, you know, what is this, you know, how much do I need? And the performance is not good. Should I add more nodes to it? Should I, uh, you know, increase the RAM? And, you know, there's a big question that's around. And, you know, it's a very important question because it's like, most of the investment goes to this part on, you know, how much you're going to invest on the servers. So what are your thoughts on this, uh, Miguel? I mean, I would say basically what I would do is, you know, I would reach out to our hosting providers like Nexus we do uh, basically, and we try to get, you know, what the best recommendations. And we also like, you know, decide on uh, if it's a uh, dedicated, whether it's a shared uh, hosting solution is what is needed is one thing we check. And sometimes we even do load testing and stress testing to determine if our current server is able to handle our normal and holiday crowd. And uh, sometimes, you know, what we do is even we try restructuring the server rather than adding more power to it, like uh, maintaining web application and database into different dedicated servers and uh, see if that works for us. And uh, also, you know, trying to add load balancer if we have more loads and even try to have a temporary setup of like, uh, you know, additional nodes for a holiday period of three months and if not needed, just release that. So these are some things that we've been doing and I think you're the expertise on this. So what are your thoughts on this and how do we handle this? I'm going to start by saying one size doesn't fit everything for Magento. If you go to a hosting provider and they don't ask you any questions and they tell you, you need this server, that's going to be problematic. At Nexus, what we usually do is we send the questionnaire asking the site owner or the store owner what their current traffic is, what their current order is, how many orders they want to process in a day, an hour, a week, all that kind of stuff, like the current traffic and how much traffic do they expect during the holiday season or Black Friday, Cyber Monday. We try to understand their current state and we try to size the servers they need based on information. You're not going to be hear me say, hey, you need a server with, I don't know, 16 gigabytes of RAM and this and that. Everything is going to be different and it will really depend on your current Magento implementation. Now, you don't want to leave your server sizing and decisions for last. Most of the people, they do projects, they code and everything, and they come to me one week before they launch and they are like, okay, I want, I want to use Nexus. And I'm like, okay, when are, you going, when are you going live? And they tell me, I want to go live in a week. And I tell them, hey, you're already late. You don't want to leave your stuff for the last minute because you might find incompatibilities. You might find we are using a different varnish version to the one you're using in your development environment. That also includes MySQL, PHP, Apache, Nginx. There are a ton of things that might be different between different environments and you want to take that into consideration. It's not something you leave, you leave for last. Now, again, I'm going to repeat what we just said. You need to test in an environment as close as possible with your live site production. Talk about your dev servers in the cloud. There are a ton of options out there and there are things you can actually use and you can almost entirely develop your site or your project directly in the cloud. Now, you also need to keep in mind the performance profile of a Magento 2 store is very different from Magento 1. If you used to have a server for Magento 1 and you think it will work for Magento 2, that's a terrible idea. There are new requirements like Elastic Church and Varnish. There are different infrastructure requirements. You can also leverage Redis. There are a ton of things that are completely different. And what used to work for Magento 1 might not work for Magento 2. And that's a really common mistake we keep seeing. People believe it's the same product because it has the same name, and that's not true. Most of the times you will need more resources for, for Magento 2 to run Magento 2 at the same level you were previously running Magento 1. And that's one of the things where people keep failing. Nobody really understands how different these two products are. And when people try to replicate the setups they used to have for Magento 1, they realize they need more resources. They need more front-end servers. They need to configure Elasticsearch for the catalog search engine. Varnish as a full page cache, Redis as the backend cache, and sessions. It's a completely different platform. So it's it's just a different story. You know, you don't want to do the same you were doing. And in the case you don't have the resources, there are a ton of things you can do to try to improve your performance with, with instead of blowing your budget. We're gonna be talking about that in the next question. But I think those are some of the advices I usually tell people when they ask me, how do I how should I be sizing my server?
Sure, Miguel. Thanks a lot. And I think, yeah, as you said, you know, M1 and M2 are entirely different because we are able to optimize uh, using a few techniques and M1 doesn't mean it's going to work on M2. So it's a different ball game. And thanks for bringing that up. I think that's a common mistake many people have been doing around uh, recently. Yep. Some of the things that we see when people try to scale their operations is that they are trying to scale their technological operations when they are having business issues. I have a really interesting story I usually tell when people ask me about scaling. A friend of mine used to work for this retail store and they were having a ton of orders being returned. At least two out of five orders were being returned and nobody really understood why that was happening. And then one time they visit the factory where the packages were being, they were, were being made and they realized the guy putting together the packages had some issues and the list that was being printed, like the physical paper this guy has in his hands, was missing some critical information. Do you know how they fixed this? They added an image, like a simple product image to the list that was being printed to organize these packages. And they were able to reduce their returns at least 25 to 35%. That's a really interesting thing. And that's, that's a way to show us that every little problem doesn't have to be fixed by a really big technological solution. While the solution in here was technical because they added a new image to the order list, this was really simple and anybody could have figured this out. But again, they, they sat in the factory, they were checking how the business project was being handled and they realized they were able to solve this issue, this return issue this company was having simply by adding an extra image. And that's great because that didn't cost the merchant almost anything. They only need to print something different and they had way less returns by doing a really simple change. Now, having good technological partners will help you solve common issues and scale when needed. There are things like auto scaling. For me, auto scaling means giving you more PHP workers. There are other companies that give you more resources to handle the same amount of requests. But if you ask me, what you really want when it comes to auto scaling is more PHP workers so you can be able to handle more requests. Let's, let's, let's imagine you are having a Cyber Monday or Black Friday promotion. Let's say you are having instead of 10 users an hour, you have 100 users an hour. Now, you won't be able to handle that much request by using the same resources. You need to add more PHP workers. And that can come in the form of an extra front-end server that can come in the form of more PHP workers in your load balancer. There are a ton of things you can improve and it's not that hard, you know? Varnish is great. Consider a CDN, of course. CDNs are great these days and are really simple to configure. Fastly is a common option. Cloudflare is also used to avoid bringing your site down. And besides that, there are a ton of things we are gonna be talking about a little bit later today, but again, you really need to understand which processes will help you scale your business. And that not only includes technological processes, but also business processes. Oh, definitely, Miguel. So as you said, you know, it could be the smallest of, uh, you know, problem that has to be resolved to scale your business really big. So it doesn't mean it has to be really technical. Anything that you change in your business process could make a big impact. And, uh, you know, uh, again, as you said, you know, uh, all of the things differ from business to business. So you've got to understand first what your problem is really. And I think from my point of view, what we have been doing years along is, you know, try to see how much you can automate the current business process, you know, so you're able to be competitive with your, uh, uh, your competitors and also, you know, how you could improve your sales and ROI. And uh, I think the major game changer over here for most of our clients is, you know, having a good technological partner. So once you have a good technological partner, how you're halfway across that, you know, you're almost there. You, you, you're, I think you're on a speed boat. You could reach the quicker and also safer. And a good technological partner will just make sure, you know, your website is up to date in terms of, you know, of the enhancements, the security and the upgrades. And also they'll make sure you have an edge over your competitors. So these things would help you scale as you grow. So, and also they would have a good architecture in place for you when they're designing your website such that uh, right now, if you have around hundred customers, uh, in, in a year or so, you're hitching 100,000 or even a 1 million, your website plays good for you. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to really do a big revamp or anything. So that's some major things that a technological partner plays for you. So that's how important they are to scale your business. And apart from the recently trends that we've been saying is, you know, using AI chatbots for uh, your clients, that's one big thing. 
And recently what we have done is we've tried to integrate the AI chatbot even with the ERPs. So, you know, uh, ERP, the main thing is the dynamic pricing when it comes to B2B customers. So right now, you know, these AI chatbots based on who was logged in, they're able to fetch the dynamic price from the ERP and show it on the chat when they search for a hot product. And, you know, based on that particular user, we are able to provide more recommendations to the products. So these are some things that you're able to do, I, do in AI chatbots. And also, you know, uh, like using abandoned cart emails to, you know, bring in more customers, offer them a limited time coupon or something, asking them to come back. I think that could make a big impact. And, you know, again, basically going back to the basic, you know, optimizing your website for organic traffic, that could help you scale really well. And, you know, one more major thing that many people miss to do is optimize your website for mobile devices because people who are trying to, you know, purchase through mobiles is greatly growing. We are able to see almost, you know, uh, maybe uh, two years back, it used to be 50% desktop and 50% mobile, but now it's changed. The game has changed around 70 to 80% people try to purchase on mobiles and it's just 20% of the people who go to desktop and most of the clients we see. So, and also Google ranks you better when your website is optimized for mobile. So that's one thing you have to have on top of your list. And again, you know, you can use heat maps and that will tell you what your customers are really doing in the website. So based on that, you could plan how you could work around, make, make changes in your website, have a better UI experience for the your customers that could help you scale better. So I think these are a few things that we have been doing and uh, yeah, it's been working uh, pretty good for us. Thank you. Yep. All right, we are about to end this talk and we are gonna be giving you some advices for the holiday season readiness. Now, there are a lot of ways to improve your performance without, without destroying your budget. During the holiday season, everybody talks about performance, but most of the times it doesn't really mean what you think it means. Adding resources is expensive. Start with the low hanging fruit and optimize your code. And this is really important. Go to mention this. If you don't have a really good code, you might have server issues, but again, you don't want to be loading, I don't know, models in a reach. You don't want to be sending campaigns that end up in a landing page that's a category page or a search page because those pages are resource hooking pages. So there are a ton of things you can do. Like when you think about doing a campaign, how about you send that link, that landing page link to a page you made static? If you don't have to query your database, you can, if you can make your landing page static, you will save a ton of resources and you will be able to, sell, to serve more users with the same amount of free tools. Now, there are tools like New Relic and Black, Black Friar to uncover backend performance problems, like loading a loops and, any, and other code stuff you might be seeing. Now, make, goals, make sure catching is enabled and working. And again, like Gotham said at the very beginning, production mode is your friend. We keep seeing sites Magento to sites working in developer or default mode, and that's going to cause you problems. That's going to cause you performance issues, and that's going to make your hosting bill go all the way up because the, the static files won't be deployed. You will be having to read the JavaScript and the CSS files. There's going to be a bunch of stuff that's not going to be working as expected, and people keep, re keep forgetting to enable production mode when it comes to Magento 2, and that's one of the first advices I, I gave everybody. Keep in mind, cache is good, varnish is really simple to configure, and production mode is also really helpful. Sure, Miguel. I think I would want to take one point alone over here and reiterate it again because, you know, it's holiday season and I think most of the clients are ready to send out, you know, the email campaigns with the offers. And it's really important to, as you said, you know, have a landing page that is static, that is low weight, because the minute you send out the emails, people are going to jump onto your website with that particular page. So if it is a page that has more custom options, that's going to be heavy with the images and everything, your site is going to be pulled down. So that's something that's very critical. Maybe you guys can just go back after the session and try working on it with your marketing team. That's on top of the list. Thanks for bringing that up, Michael, because that's something we have also been doing earlier and we have changed that. So that's a good point adding over there. And again, you know, uh, one thing is like in the, in the holiday season, your, your website tends to be, you know, slower than usual during the peak hours because of the incoming traffic. So this is something, as I said, again, you will have to work with this with a, with, a, with a server that's equal to your production and see how you can optimize that. And again, one more thing that you've got to do is please make sure you freeze your code at least two weeks before the holiday season. It doesn't make sense, you know, just working till the last minute trying to optimize your code for the holiday season. And when the holiday season comes up, an issue pops up uh, from nowhere and that pulls your website completely down. So just leave your site to settle down at least for a week to two, just to see how your normal traffic is handled. There's no issues with the new optimized code. So that's one thing it's on top of my list. And again, you know, something we've been doing new is, you know, 
We've been using the latest image format from Google called .webp. So this uh, image, you know, it's employing both lossy and lossless compression. Uh, it's currently developed by Google, and you know, using WebMP, I think the images are 26 percent smaller in size uh, compared to PNG. But again, you know, the, the the quality of the image is still there. And one more thing is advanced bundling concept. I think this is being developed by Magepack, and it's been really great. It's I think it's helping stores increase speed by three x uh, in terms of speed. So that's something we have been incorporating, and it's really been helping us a lot. So that's something you guys can try. And again, you know, moving uh, some of your uh, servers, like you know, your file server. Uh, to, you know, more from 1G network to 10G network is something we did recently with Nexus, and that's also been helping us. And again, going back to the basics, make sure you audit your code, your code is good, the standards are maintained, and test and test it again and make sure it's good. Uh, so I think those are some things we've got to figure out is using. Yep, absolutely. We don't have a lot of time. We are going to have time for only one question, and it's going to be what's we have three different questions. Most of them are about which tool to use. And for me in particular, I usually use Siege to oh, test different concurrent users. Well. There are other services out there where you can do load testing online. Is there anything you currently use? Go down. We don't have a lot of time, so be brief and we'll do the final, yeah. I think, the uh, final yeah. conclusion. Yeah. yeah GT metrics and maybe page insights is something you can concentrate on because Google is the one that's going to keep ranking you. So I think uh, page insights is one thing that you can consider from my end. Uh, Yep, that's our experience too. When it comes to load testing with a lot of users, you can do your own script, you can use siege testing, and there are a bunch of tools out there you can also use as product as a service. Okay, I think we are right about ending. Yes. Man, thank you very much for having us today. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here today. And if you have any questions, yeah. you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, you can find Godam everywhere else too. And again, thank you very much for your time today. And I really hope you enjoyed our presentation. Yes, it's really wow and wow and wow. Thanks, Megao, and thanks, Gotham. I'll see you at the next session. Thanks, guys. Ciao, hasta la vista.